My project is called Digital Zombies. It was developed by Dr. Juliette Levy of the University of California, Riverside. She is a history professor, and uh, her goal with the project was to teach her students how to do history research through the frame of digital zombies. Her idea of what a digital zombie is, is a person who tends to rely solely on the internet, sites such as Wikipedia, or googling things and not fact-checking what they're getting their research from and using that for their university papers. Uh, digital zombies never step inside a library, they don't fact-check their sources, and they kind of just blindly take the information that's given to them. The goal of the project is to make the students into digital citizens who are people who know how to use the library resources and know how to fact check what they're looking at so they don't just take this information blindly. Uh, the project itself is divided into missions which are essentially the assignments of the course. Some of the missions include checking a Wikipedia page to see if the information on it is trustworthy and why, and also creating a false version of history that feels true in a manner that could fool a digital zombie, and this includes writing an article that flips the history on its head and also creating false evidence that looks realistic in order to try to fool digital zombies. The project is such a neat idea, but it does have a problem. It's not very interactive because all of the missions are just listed on a page on a WordPress-like site, and there's no through storyline given to the mission, so it's not very... It doesn't really grab your attention as much as it could. Because of this, I had two goals with my project. Uh, I wanted to adapt the project into something that was more interactive, including making the student feel more engaged with the assignments itself as well as with a storyline that ran through the whole mission series. And I also wanted to adapt it to uh, the library resources in the University of Oregon libraries since I work at the libraries here and I have access to these resources in the campus around it. My search for materials was primarily in the terms of finding a new platform to move the site to, though there were also searches in terms of finding resources for research help, which I will get into in a little bit. My biggest issue was figuring out how to break up the missions uh, for the assignments without getting unwieldy. I wasn't really sure how much separation would be too much or if I would be doing it too little and whether how that would affect how engaging the site would be. I also needed to figure out how to structure it. Um, I wasn't sure at first whether I would want to keep it linear or if I thought that would be too similar to the original format, so I was trying to think about how to solve that problem. I also wanted to figure out how to incorporate a storyline without taking away the meat of the project. Engagement is important, but so is the work itself, and I didn't want the new incorporated storyline to overshadow the actual work that would be done by the students who were taking part in the project. So I started off by trying to find a platform. The first one I considered was Scalar. Uh, I used it earlier in the term for uh, my group's tech exploration project. And I, was, I thought it would be a good idea at the time because I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go linear or not. And Scalar would have been an excellent choice if I decided not to go linear because it has the opportunity to use multiple pathways and all sorts of different ways. And it would have been great if I would wanted to do something more flexible and not so straightforward like that. Um, eventually, I did decide that it was too media-focused, and it wouldn't be great for a project that would be primarily made out of text. So, um, and I also did eventually decide that I wanted to go linear, so uh, trying to wrestle with Scalar when uh, I wasn't going to be using the nonlinear paths wouldn't actually be worth it. I also considered using WordPress, which is similar to what the original site is using. Um, WordPress is really easy to set up and it's really easy to use, so I would have been able to get started pretty quickly with it. Uh, my concerns with WordPress was about how to handle the number of pages that I need to use, especially since I had been trying to get away from using the singular page method and um, it would be a little bit more difficult to try to interact with a blog style thing that I thought just because it would be kind of a longer version of that singular page that all the missions are listed on and it didn't seem like it would be flexible enough. Um, I also thought that since I'd be using so many pages and so many posts it would be pretty 
difficult to link them together in a way that would make a usable map for the entire project. Um, overall, I found WordPress to be more flexible and more fitting for Scalar, but I didn't think it was flexible enough to use. I finally decided that I was going to build a website from mostly from scratch and publish it via GitHub. I had learned to use GitHub last term for another one of my classes, and I was also able to take a lot of the CSS from a website that I built for my cat as a final project. So largely I was already set up and ready to go to use that without too much difficulty. It allowed me to have complete control over how things looked and how to link pages together. And because I'm well versed in HTML and CSS, it was really easy for me to use personally. Um, in terms of story interactivity, um, I've been recently listening to the Drunks and Dragons podcast about Dungeons and Dragons campaigns, and uh, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons myself, but I attended many D&D sessions at my partner's place when I was in early college, and I just watched them play, so I'm very familiar with it. So I viewed creating the storyline that I incorporated into the missions as becoming a dungeon master in which I needed to balance short narratives with short bursts of activity, which in the case of D&D could be defeating monsters, but in this case it's completing missions. I faced some challenges with trying to locate uh, text-based sources for this kind of project because this kind of project is trying to teach the user how to do the research by themselves. You want the students to do the research and by doing a lot of the research by yourself, you're kind of taking away from that. So my resources were less specific about what they were researching and more specific to how to help guide them through the research. Uh, resources in many cases were not actually physical resources because uh, many things that are supposed to help guide students to more specific resources are things like buildings and people rather than uh, something you'd find on a website or in a book. So this project's resources included the uh, libraries themselves. Uh, the University of Oregon has eight different libraries and students were required to visit the six libraries on the Eugene campus. They also needed to learn and familiarize themselves with the Rippey Library at the Oregon Institute of Marine Biology in Charleston and the Portland Library and Learning Commons. Uh, maps of campus and the libraries were also important tools that they were required to find on their own. Uh, another critical resource included the librarians themselves. One early mission requires enlisting the help of a librarian, and several others recommend talking to them to get their help on assignments. One assignment also suggests using the distance help options, such as instant messaging, emailing, calling, or texting a librarian. Um. Resources accessible from the University of Oregon Libraries website are important for one assignment. So one of the resources that I link to are how-to guides written by librarians to guide students through using the tools that are available on the website. This not only helps students use these tools, but it also helps them learn about tools that they were previously unaware of because they might see a guide for one of these tools not knowing what it is and they'll become curious about it and take a look and possibly use that resource later. I also linked explicitly to one of the guides, which is a guide to proper citation etiquette. As this class is designed for beginning researchers, it's important that they learn to properly credit people for their work. This is something that wasn't part of the original project, and that surprised me because learning to cite properly is very important when you're just starting to learn how to research. I um, also included suggestions to check out the history and the talk tabs on Wikipedia pages for the Wikipedia assignment, and I hope that pointing out these tabs specifically would help students go in the right direction while trying to determine whether the research or whether the information on these Wikipedia pages were credible or not. Um, I also created a resource guide myself that I titled What the Brains is a Primary Resource. Um, it summarizes the definitions of primary, secondary, and tertiary resources, and it links to the Virginia Tech Guide for further information about the difference between the three. Um, this is also something that was not included into the original project, which again kind of surprised me because if you're asking students to look for primary and secondary resources. They're kinda, they they kind of need to know what they are before they're actually able to identify them and use them properly. 
Um, so, and since beginning researchers might not know how to tell the difference, I felt that creating this kind of page would be really important for at least pointing them in the right direction when trying to determine whether a resource is a primary resource or not. Um, the Virginia Tech Guide also includes lots of examples of each kind of source in the humanities and social sciences, which could be really helpful for a uh, humanities and history heavy project like this one. The bulk of my project was creating a website and publishing it via GitHub. Uh, I divided each mission present in the original, uh, the original website into two to three short pages. Uh, these were typically broken up into a narrative that contextualized what was going on, an activity, um, and then an assignment. There are ten missions, one per week of the term. Pages are kept short enough to keep the student's attention, but each week only requires looking at two to three pages, so it's not that overwhelming to look at, which is a pretty stark contrast from the uh, the single page that just lists out all the assignments as given in the original. Um, I also created a sitemap for those who need to find a page uh, that's somewhere in the middle of the missions uh, because they lost their place or they just wanted to refer back to it. So um, since the pages progressed linearly, it was important to me that I include that so that people had a reference to go back to so they can find these missions that are kind of in the middle without having to click through all of the missions. Um, the first page, which is labeled Start Your Mission, starts by listing out the contents of a survival kit. And the contents are your analog writing utensils, uh, your digital devices such as your phones, tablets, or laptops, uh, your library access credentials, and then uh, World War Z by Max Max Brooks. Uh, World War Z is a book of fake history of the zombie war as told by interview subjects who were supposedly there at the time uh, that the zombie war was happening. Uh, the book serves to help the zombie theme uh, come about and it also creates the basis for the final project which is creating a fake history itself. Um, you start off by uh, reading World War Z, and uh, you're, the character in the story starts off by reading that, and it's told in second person. So you start off by walking down the path reading the book, and you finish the book, and you're smiling, and then suddenly your smile starts to fade as you look up, and you see all of these digital zombies that are walking along the bike path, and you just kind of stare at them in horror, and then suddenly you get shoved into the back of a moving vehicle, and you get transported to the University of Oregon campus, which realistically is only about three miles away from the bike path, and then you get kind of just pulled out of the van by this mysterious being who you can't really identify, and they're kind of a strange person, and they want to help you learn how to protect yourself from becoming a digital zombie, and they explain to you why that's important. Um, you eventually accept their offer because you don't want to become a digital zombie. Um, and then the mysterious person starts giving you uh, these missions to complete in order to get through your training so that you can prevent becoming a digital zombie. Uh, the missions progress at the typical pattern of getting narrative context for your task, performing an activity to learn about how to not be a digital zombie, and then doing a what is a typically a written assignment, usually a pretty short one. Uh, weeks with longer assignments sometimes don't have an activity, and one week requires peer-reviewed papers, which was not in the original project, but I thought was also important to uh, learning how to do research. So, um, in this particular week, the typical activity and then assignment order was flipped around so that the assignment was done first, and then the activity was doing the peer review with the partner. Um, keeping things short proved to be pretty engaging to students as they don't feel as overwhelmed as they do with the wall of text that's presented to them on the original site. I tested both of these sites, both the original and my new site, on one of my coworkers who is a soon-to-be college senior, and she said that she would much rather use my site because she felt more interested in the activities with the layout that I chose. Uh, she even kept this stance when I pointed out that I'd had quite a bit more work when adapting the project. 
which was surprising because you'd think that a college student approaching dead week would want to keep the workload as small as possible. Uh, since the text chunks are so small, it's easy to pass off more work as less work because the eye is fooled by the amount of words on the page. In the end, you end up creating a final project that involves creating a lie about history, including creating the fake sources that support your lie. Um, in the epilogue, the mysterious being, who my coworker insists is, is actually Gandalf, uh, disappears suddenly because, supposedly because your lie was so effective, and then you kind of just go home and go along your life, and um, at that point you become a digital citizen because you now know how not to become a digital zombie. Uh, the purpose of the creating a lie about history assignment was to uh, learn how digital, digital zombies think and learn how to avoid uh, being tricked like one by learning how to identify how to um, learning how to identify these fake sources by creating one yourself so you can start figuring out how, what the warning signs are before actually running into the situation in real life. Uh, your project is supposed to be able to fool a digital zombie into thinking that your fake history is actually a real thing that happened, but um, a what is called a digital citizen should be able to tell the difference between the two, though if you're really convincing, you might be able to fool both digital zombies and digital citizens into thinking your history is real, in which case props to you because that's not exactly an easy task to complete. In terms of reflection, I think in general I did really well at adapting the website to its new form. I managed to create something fun and engaging, and I essentially revamped an entire college course in the process, which was not something I really thought about when I first chose this project. Um, I do not have a large history background. I took a handful of history classes in my undergrad, and while I was taught about the difference between primary and secondary sources, I didn't have the greatest idea what history resources were available in general because I was typically handed my resources in these lower division classes in the form of textbooks. I didn't really have enough time to focus on adapting the technology, finding general research resources, and finding history resources, so I stuck with the first two because I felt like they were the most critical to the backbone of the project. The history resources, while they would have been nice to find, are things that the general resource research resources can point students towards so that they can find them on their own, while well, you can't really say the same thing about uh, the specific history resources pointing towards the general resources. Um, I also wish that I could have spent more time on the accessibility issues with the website. In general, the website has minimal issues in terms of screen reader compatibility and compatibility with mobile devices, but it's not at all printer friendly, so those without mobile devices may have trouble accessing it while moving around the libraries and around campus. With more time to work on this project, these are issues that could be fixed with minimal struggle. I just ran out of time. Overall, I was very happy with how my project turned out. I hadn't been expecting to code a new website when I first picked out the project, but I'm actually pretty glad that I took that route because I really love web programming and it made creating this project really fun for me, even before adding in the silly storyline with uh, the mysterious person who is a who may or may not be Gandalf. I'm considering sending the link to the site I created to the professor who originally came up with the idea for the project to see if she has any feedback for me. Um, I may need to work on it a little bit more before I feel confident enough to do this, though. Uh, thank you for watching.